create a new color, you'll see I have this set amount of swatches. If I go to my window and I look at color, right. basically because we're in the RGB color spit working space, I have that as a slider value, contrary to what happens in InDesign or, or Illustrator, which is CMYK driven. Now when I want to make a new color, if you want to make sure that you're kind of in this range most of the time, if you're doing like inking or uh, color overlays and things like that, there's this little checkbox called an only web colors, which basically says here, we're going to take it away because what happens is a lot of people are like, ooh, I can have any color I want. However, knowing that just because I can create it does not mean that it's going to necessarily recreate itself. Right. So sticking within like the Pantone color sets, right? Sticking within the, the swatches out of the box kind of thing is, is a good thing to do. Um, just because that we want to be able to recreate what we're seeing. So I typically always just leave web colors on so that way I'm guaranteed I'm doing any type of trying to do like a rendering out of Photoshop or something which we'll talk about during the tutorial. Um, I'm making sure that when I print, I'm going to get as close as possible to what I want. Again, as designers, especially interior designers, color is like uber, uber important. Okay? You know, and as an architect, you know, doing the exteriors, you know, brick is brick. Brick is going to be a color. And chances are it's not going to be the exact color. It's going to be a mishmash of a bunch of different colors based on where the brick is fired and killed. So this idea of color is still important, but not as important as an interior design color scheme. Okay. Alrighty. Moving on. So now I have my image. I know my gamut warning and everything else. I can say, you know what, I'm fine with that. It's white anyway, mostly. mostly. So I'm going to ignore it. If you end up with like half the image turning gray, you might want to go back and recheck and do some photo filters. So how do I start managing this, warming it up, cooling it down? You know, Photoshop has all kinds of cool stuff you can explore. Honestly, this is not a 12-week course in Photoshop. I can give you a 12-week course in Photoshop. And this is not what that is. I expect you just to go and start playing around with Photoshop, figuring it out. Um, now, there's this adjustment under the image area, right? So I can start using that to balance things out. So talking about color management, go to that particular set. Sure, that's that lecture. This week's lecture. So image color correction. All right. So there's going to be a lot of times, and this deals with scanning. So when I go to scan a document in, right, something I've hand sketched, right, and I've, I've marked it up and everything, got my nice, you know, awesome. What are those? That, uh, what were those markers that were like like five dollars a marker, or like color markers or something? You got your super cool markers and you, and you do up your nice thing or you watercolor it out, right? And it looks beautiful and then you want to get it digitally scanned and you scan it in. And the next thing you know, because the scanner is not necessarily calibrated to what you see on your computer screen as well. Right, again, running running a design firm is tough. Right, it comes in as looking like this, right? Which is not what the colors actually are in this actual piece. It ends up being like we have to do some color correction and get it back to the color you actually drew, right? Because there's a changing. So how do I manipulate color um, once I have it? And that's based upon the pixel value. So what we can do in Photoshop, there's a variety of things we can do to try and mitigate color. And this is really what Photoshop's for. It's not, again, it's not a drawing program. Um, I see a lot of people, you know, they come into the offices and they're doing like these nice Photoshop renderings and it looks great what they do, but it's not really the intent of the software. I um, mean, software intent is about managing existing photos, right? Rendering, photographs, things like that, because it's based on pixel values. That's the power of Photoshop, not the drawing capability of Photoshop, okay? So if I want to mitigate that, I'm going to double click on my layer, right? It unlocks that layer. Um, we're going to get huge into 
and we've talked, I, I did the survey, we've all ran Photoshop, but chances are a lot of you probably haven't talked about what an adjustment layer is. All right, so I use more adjustment layers than anything in Photoshop. So there's three major adjustment layers, levels, curves, and hue and saturation, right? So typically I do my hue and saturation um, first. And now what we look at is now that I put that in, it basically creates a mask so that any layer that below that is going to now be affected. So if I have a compilation of like like people in my image and everything else, I'm, cause I'll do that in Photoshop. I'll put people into my renderings and things like that. Um, it'll basically affect the whole entire layer stack below. So that's an adjustment layer. There's ways we can change that. We're going to talk about that later today too. And then I also do a curves. So I go layer, new adjustment layer, curves. Curves always goes below levels. And then I do layer, new adjustment layer, levels. So if you wanted to, if you were going to set up a Photoshop template for yourself, this is kind of what it would begin to look like. Okay. Always having that. So when I look at my levels, and this has already been a balanced image, the best we can do, right? I have a good even spread. Now, theoretically, we would want, um, it's kind of like being a musician, right? I'm balancing my frequencies. When I'm, like as a bass player, I have you know big long waves that go into the end of the room. Then I have my short, clicky waves that are in the front of the room because they're shorter waves. Same thing with like color spaces. I'm mitigating those frequencies that are happening um, through the curve. So let's say in my mid-tone area, I can click on that, and you'll see that if I want to start dragging down, you'll see that gamut warning, right? You see that gamut warning? So everybody's paying attention to this area. So let's zoom in on that so we can see that. If I want to remove my gamuts, again, I'm picking my mid-tones in this, and then I can drag that out, and you'll see that, bam, gone. Now, on the screen, it's, on my screen, it, it's starting to become overbright in some areas, but on this screen, it looks good. So chances are we're going to be okay. So you kind of want to start balancing it that way, so that's one way to get rid of your gamut warning. Now, once I adjust the curves, and the curves is like slight adjustments to get rid of those gamuts, then I can come in. Now you'll see what happened to my levels, is now I have things that are happening that are out of range in some other areas that I may or may not necessarily see. But levels are typically, generally speaking, controlling your, your contrast. So as I increase that, you'll see down here what happens with my gamut warning, right? So my shadows, my darker ends are starting to have a problem. That's right. The idea is trying to manipulate and balance this out so it's it's got a nice even tonality to it. Right? So and you can see how the gamut one then gets affected. Some things become over bright, not gonna print. Makes sense. And it's gonna be different for every single image that you ever produce out of Photoshop. So again, there's no clear answer to anything. It's really again subjective. I mean, the tools in the computer for color space management are there so you can say, okay, my intent is to print these colors, right? So it's up to you to then mitigate that thing. And then hue and saturation, right? Do I want it more, do I want it warmer or do I want it cooler, right? So it's like photo filtering the image, right? Take out all the color, no saturation, some saturation, right? I want to start making it warmer or cooler on the screen, right? movie effects, things like that, okay?